Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Excel and Excel. Pag-usapan natin how to use Power Pivot and ang demo natin is for a sales monitoring report or or a network of files for when you are monitoring your sales um, and when you you are purchasing. I will use Power Pivot to generate reports. Maganda tong tool or magandang matutunan to for when you are um, combining data from iba-ibang files and instead of manually copying and pasting every time na mag-run ka ay hahayaan natin na mag-usap-usap na lang yung mga files na yun on the background. So, I will show you my screen. So, here we have our file, no? Uh, list ng files. So, I want you to imagine na merong relationship yung mga files na yan. So, interrelated sila. For example, we have yung customer master. Ibig sabihin, yan yung list na ating customers, uh, details about them, and um, maybe yung, we can subdivide that by, for example, yung location nila sa inyong sales report. If that matters to you, then you have to maintain something like this. So, yung customer master natin will only deal with data about your customers, okay? The next naman is yung items master, which is yung data about your items. Now, this can expand to include yung specifications, weight, ganon, and yung complete list ng items natin. And we installed a naming convention for this. And if I open that, you can see na meron tayong item code here. Now, note na yung item code na to ang magiging um, way para mag-relate sa isa't isa yung ating mga files because yung item code na yun will be present both when you are purchasing and when you are selling yung inyong inventory. So, ang ating nature of business ay basically buy and sell. So, this is para kapag nag-record tayo ng sales or purchases, we can just refer to this item code. Um, instead of ilalagay pa natin kung ano yung brand model and size which you can see na pwedeng umuulit siya. So, just imagine mas marami, kung mas maraming items, mas malaking problema. So, mas maganda kung per item code lang yung ating list. Then, moving on, we have our price master. So, for price master natin, ang data naman na nandito ay yung item code, again, and the purchase price. Magkano natin siyang nabibili? So, later on, when we calculate kung magkano yung tubo natin, you can identify by using this. So, kung ganito natin siyang binibili, and um, later on, Paan natin siya bibenta, makuha natin yung tubo natin. So, let's close that file. Let's go to our purchase list. Dito naman, meron na tayong listahan every time tayo bumibili. So, ito yung uh, date na bumili tayo, yung item na binili natin, at kung ilan ang nabili natin. You can see na wala tong price. Wala siyang price, hindi necessary kasi yung ating price list na file, nandoon na yung ating purchase price. So, that is why hindi na natin siya kailangan ilagay dito. We can just put the quantity. Okay, that is because I want to demonstrate how the relationships work pagdating sa Excel. Hindi ko yung mada-demo sa totoong buhay, pero at least relationships natin sa Excel ay maayos, so makakatulong naman sa inyo. The next is we will go to sales list. So dito naman, we have our date, then the customer. So ito yung um, identifier naman, ito naman yung code na nandun din sa customer master natin. Then we have our item code, Mag ilan yung nabenta natin, and yung sales price. So yung sales price, ito yung may tubo na. Now, how do we generate a report combining all those um, tables? Yun yung pag-uusapan natin in this video. So over here, we have a blank na lang na workbook. Ang gagawin lang natin ay pupunta tayo sa Power Pivot. Ngayon, ano yung pagkakaiba ng Power Pivot tsaka ng Power Query which we discussed in the previous video? Sa Power Query kasi, basically, nagtatanong ka lang, kaya nga query, di ba? Nagtatanong ka lang or nag, nanghihingi ka lang ng data from another table. So, it's more of about presenting yung data na yon in such a way na malinis na siya and naintindihan na siya ng inyong tables. Sa Power Pivot naman, hindi necessary na mag-appear sa isang isang worksheet or sa isang table lahat ng data um, you can just define yung kung how they relate to each other and then from that you can generate your pivot table showing that data and ipapreset mo na agad yung data mo to activate natin yung power pivot na window click natin to manage what I want to emphasize is is it really worth learning so kaya natin siya i-demonstrate now we have our uh, power pivot na na window here so, what I can do here is I can uh, build yung ating network ng mga files or ng tables. So, ang gagawin ko is I will select from other sources. Ayan. So, mayroong tayong import wizard. So, dito natin isa-select ko ano yung data na gusto natin kunin. We will select Excel file. 
Next, isa-isa natin siyang kukunin. So, we will use the first row as column headers kasi yung tables natin, di ba nakaset up siya as tables, tapos yung first line ay header niya na. Then, click browse. And then, kunin muna natin yung customer master. So, next. And you can see here, ayan, ayan yung table na file, na laman ng file na yon. So, I'll just click finish and I'll let it work sa background. So, sabi niya, 15 rows daw ng customers ang na-transfer na. So, if I close that, ayan na siya. So, you can see, ito yung dito sa ating power pivot na window. Parang meron din siyang kanya-kanyang tab. So, ito yung tab natin for customers. If I add another file, I can just click other sources again. Do the same thing. Now, so far, walang connection yung customers natin sa items, right? Um, may customer code tayo dito, pero... Wala sa item na, na ito kasi nga master data pa siya. Ibig sabihin, siya yung, um, it appears once for each table, tapos wala siyang relationship, di ba? So, we need files that can bridge those data together. So, mag-add pa tayo ng iba. So, from other sources. Now, I want you to understand na yung price list and yung items list, meron na siyang connection, right? Meron na something in common sa kanila. So, I can I can tell Excel to analyze that. Ibig sabihin, kasi diba dito sa items list, meron tayong item code, right? And the same item code, ay nandun din na ginagamit natin sa price list. So, instead of manually using VLOOKUP or XLOOKUP sa ating data, if we connect those two tables together, naiintindihan na agad ng power pivot na when you are talking about this code, it relates to the data as well of the other one. The fastest way to do that is to go to diagram view over here sa right. So, ngayon kasi nasa data view tayo, no? Nakikita natin yan. So, diagram view tayo. Makikita natin yung itsura nung ating mga data so far na naka-import. So, we have our customers. Wala siyang connection. Pero dito, yung item code na to can relate to the item code here. So, if I click and drag that, you can see na nagkaroon siya ng parang bridge, may line siya yan. And um, if I do need to query or add a column doon na nagre-relate sa dalawa, I can do that. So, for example lang, if I go to data view and I I want to add dito yung ating price ng items, I can do that. So, I can do this. I can type equals and then related. Yan. Pag tinag natin related, lalabas lahat ng mga columns na meron ng relationship. So, since may relationship yung items list and prices natin, nag-appear yung dalawang columns na nandoon sa ating um, file na yun. So, if I select purchase price and click enter, hindi ko na kailangan i-look up siya na mismo yung mag-match ng ating data. So, ito yung purchase price. So, I can rename my column um, purchase price. This is just something na pwede yung explore further if you want to concatenate stuff, if you want to well, calculate other stuff. Pero in our case, hindi naman natin ito kailangan um, ilagay dyan kasi nga may clear naman na relationship. So if we do create a pivot table, even without adding this column, mapupull niya na. So I'll show you that, delete lang natin to. So now we will add our moving na mga data na iba. So... Ito kasi tatlo, yung list ng customers, list ng items nyo, list ng price nyo. These are not necessarily changing or moving. So, kung meron kayong person in charge of purchasing, di ba? That person will key in yung mga purchases dun sa ating purchase list. Dun, if the person naman in charge of selling would add yung data dun sa sales list. So, ito na yung magbabind together sa ating data. So, import na lang natin ulit pareho. Now, you can see sa bottom ng screen ko, nandun na siya yung customers, item list, item uh, price list, purchases, and sales. Ngayon, may further connection pa siya, right? Kasi ang gusto natin ngayon is to present yung status natin, whether it's inventory um, or yung mekanik kinita natin per period of time. So, what I need to do here is to establish yung relationships nung mga dinagdag pa natin. So, go to diagram view again. Ngayon, we have our five here, yung five natin na tables. So, move, our, move ko lang para maging visible siya sa inyo. So, yung purchases natin, itong item code will appear many times, right? Hindi siya isang beses lang. Kasi tuwing may bibilhin, uh, magkikiin ka ng item code. So, ibig sabihin, 
hindi siya pwedeng maging source ng ating identifier. So, ang gagawin ko ay kukuha ako from the item code kasi it appears once lang dyan and lalagay siya sa purchases. That way, since related na yung price list papunta sa items list, pwede na rin siyang mag-connect sa ating purchases. Right? So, the same thing, this item code will also appear many times on your sales file. So, the price list will also connect to the items list and connect to our sales. Kasi nga, may flow na rin siya na 1 is 2 or oh, many dito. Okay? So, ngayon, interrelated na siya. Dito naman sa customers natin, saan nag appear yung customer? Dito rin siya nag appear sa ating sales file. So, sabihin yung customer code dito ay same sa customer dito. It appears once dito sa customer natin. So, dito natin siya manggagaling papunta dun sa ating sales. Yan. Yan. Move natin siya dito para mas visual. Walang kinalaman yung customer sa price, sa item, or sa purchases, pero may kinalaman siya sa sales. So, I can relate that to that. Okay? Now, um, let's build our pivot table reports. You go to home and click pivot table. So now, imagine ninyo yung lahat ng data na nasa background ay available na para sa inyo. So if I click OK here, makikita nyo yung pivot table fields. Now shows five tables. Big sabihin, you can pull any column from that. Kinolapse. Ayan, in-expand natin yan. Lahat ng, lahat ng columns na nandun sa, table, sa tables na yon ay pwede natin gamitin to build our pivot table. Now, if first time nyo gumamit ng pivot table at hindi niyo pa siya master, I encourage you to explore yung ating lessons previously about pivot, pivot tables kasi kailangan nyo siya ma-master para ma-build nyo yung inyong report. So, for now, ang gagawin natin is magbibuild tayo ng inventory. Yung status lang. So, what we need to do is to get yung rows. Yung rows natin would be, of course, yung ating item. Yan. So, kunin natin yung item code from the item list. Lagyan natin siya sa row. So, ito yung different na codes natin. Now, kung gusto natin inventory, syempre, kailan makita natin kung ilan yung na-purchase at ilan yung na-benta. So, kukunin natin yung ating quantity ng purchases. Ilalagyan natin siya sa values. And now, we have the quantity purchased. Now, we can rename this para mas clear. Go to value field settings lang or you can just go ahead and directly sa cell na yun yung edit Tignan natin is quantity purchased. If I click OK, so ito yung lahat ng na-purchase natin according to the purchases na file. If we want na hindi yung item code, instead of dun sa mismo purchases ay mag up lookup pa tayo, you can actually just Click and drag here, and you can see my breakdown na siya, or naka-identify na rin yung kanyang brand and model. Or if you want it na pati size, pwede rin siyang ganun. If I remove the item code, I just want to you see yung inventory ko by, by, just by the brand, I can do that as well. So, my unlimited ways to express your data to make it more specific or more general, depende na sa inyo, sa pagbibuild nyo ng pivot table without tampering yung source files nyo. Which is a good thing. So, mag-build tayo ngayon ng practical na inventory. So, ang kailangan is you have the brand, model, the size, and I will change this to ang ating design sa pivot table. Gawin natin siyang table. Ayan. Tapos, repeat natin yung item labels. Ayan. Para mandali siya sa matatingnan. So, yan yung ating mga purchases. Now, pwede natin combine kung ilan naman yung nabenta natin. So, we can use the quantity naman sa sales file. Ilagay natin siya doon and you can see ayan na. So, meron tayong quantity purchased and the sum of quantity. Now, I can rename this as well. And just like that, meron na tayong pivot table showing kung ano yung status ng ating inventory. Ngayon, ang question ngayon is kung meron tayong quantity purchased at quantity sold, gusto ko malaman yung current na volume na meron pa tayo. Pero, pagpunta naman ako sa fields, items, and sets dito, which is yun yung usually ginagawa natin at naglagay tayong calculated na item dito, hindi siya pwede. So, ano ang gagawin natin? Punta tayo sa power pivot and punta tayo sa measures. So, sa measures, dito tayo pwede maglagay ng additional na calculated na 
um, column or set of data. So, if I click new measure there, so in our case, ilagay natin siya sa um, items list. So, maglalagay tayo ng formula. So, ang panggagalingan natin ng data is yung purchases natin. So, yung sum ng quantity of purchases natin, di ba? Minus yung ating sales. Sales sum of quantity din ng ating sales. If I click OK, nagkaroon na na ng calculation dito. So, ito yung measure 1 natin where meron na tayo nung current status ng ating inventory. So, I can also rename this current stock and click OK. And now, we have the inventory. So, simple inventory report natin. The good thing about this is you can also use yung ating slicers or timelines. So, for example, gusto ko naman malaman yung per month. I don't need another report. I'll just go to my pivot table analyze. Tapos, we discussed this in a previous video. Lalagay ko dyan yung link. Um, we'll just insert yung timeline. So, may dalawang timeline dito. Yung basis mo ba is the purchase date or sales date. If I click that, I can click OK. And meron na tayong timeline. So, if I want only yung month of January, I'll just click January. Ayan. Ayan. So, ganyan siya. Nagmo-move siya. Nagre-refresh siya. So, again, if I want to go back, I will just clear the filter and we are back. All the benefits and features na part ng pivot table ay available sa inyo without having to change yung inyong source files. And the best part about it is nagre-refresh siya. Pwede mo siya i-refresh kung meron ka additional na data doon. So, for example, tandaan natin. Close muna natin tong ating file. Save natin siya. Yan. Buksan natin ngayon yung ating sales list. For example, March para lumutang siya agad. Lagay natin na bumili ulit si customer 06. Yan. So, nagdagdagad tayo ng March, right? So, isave natin tong file natin. At isara na natin siya. Pag binuksan natin yung ating um, report na nandun na yung ating pivot, you can just enable content. And uh, pansinin natin pag ni-refresh natin siya. So ngayon nasa 355 tayo, di ba? Yung current stock. If I just click refresh, ayan. So nadagdag na yung 5. So naging 350 na siya. So ibig sabihin, every time I open this report, all I need to do is to refresh and kung ano man yung current status, kung paano siya na-save dun sa mga iba-ibang files na yon, ay ma-affect na yung ating data. And the good thing about this is I can also create yung sales natin naman na report, including markup using this. I'll show you that in the part 2. Uh, stay tuned lang kayo. I hope you learned something new. Hit like kung nagustuhan nyo ating video. Share yun sa iba para sharing is caring. And um, subscribe. And hit the notification bell para ma-notify kayo pag ready na yung ating part 2. I'm Coach Abby. Thank you for joining. Ingat kayo. Be better today than you were yesterday. God bless. See you.